Hey guys, what's up? I'm Mark and in this channel, I talk about lifestyle, personal finance, and investment. In the past videos, I've shared with you my experience as an Airbnb host. From a video from way, way back, I shared with you a comparison between Agoda, Airbnb, Booking, and Expedia on what you might choose as a homeowner in trying to get short-term guests. Now, I've also shared with you about what are the condominium developers that are more likely to allow Airbnb now that you've selected your hosting platform and you've cleared it up with the building admin that you can in fact do Airbnb, let's get it started. But hold on, before you start posting pictures of your condo, let's go through a quick checklist of what your unit must have in order to satisfy guests. Now I'm using the term Airbnb as a general term, I'm really referring to short-term rentals. Now before we get started, what we're covering here would be mostly applicable for condominium units. Meaning that if you're putting up a tree house, a beach hut, or some quirky accommodation that would be more about the ambiance, then this probably might not be applicable. What I'm covering here would be more for the general population of wanting to convert your condominium unit as an Airbnb. So please keep that in mind. So what do you need in your condo unit to make it a good Airbnb? Technically speaking, whatever you put on your page and photos would only be what the guests should expect. Now this was true many years ago when Airbnb was getting started. The first Airbnb, as the name suggests, was just an air mattress in the living room and that was it. Airbnb was actually inspired by the couch surfing movement, so it was mostly backpackers and really people wanting to crash each other's homes. But with Airbnb and short-term rentals being around for more than 10 years now, there are already different expectations of what an Airbnb must have. Now I'm pretty sure that the standards may vary from country to country, from different climates and different people. So what I'm sharing here would be mostly applicable to the Philippine setting about the different expectations that guests have expressed to me throughout the years as an Airbnb host. So if you're watching this from abroad, how it applies to your local setting may vary. All right, with my disclaimers in place, we can now move on to the five things that your Airbnb must have here in the Philippines. Number one would be a water heater for your shower. Now this might seem a little basic, but I do know that there are condominium developers that don't provide a water heater upon turnover, so this might be something that you might miss out on. I personally don't take hot showers myself. If you're like me, do take note that most guests would want to take a hot shower even though our climate is already very hot. Number two, again very basic, your condominium must have an air conditioner. Now again, this might be common sense, but I actually have an experience wherein I was managing a condominium for a friend, and this friend had a two-bedroom unit, but refused to put an air conditioning in the second bedroom. So this was years ago when I was new to Airbnb, and I thought that if I put a disclaimer that there is no air conditioning in the second bedroom, then all will be understood. But of course, guests don't read the fine print, they don't really read the details. So that was quite a challenging experience for me, hosting in that unit with a lot of guests being frustrated because there was no air conditioning in the second bedroom. So learn from my mistake. Make sure that your condominium units are well ventilated with air conditioning all throughout. And just as a side note, I've actually stayed in Airbnbs in different countries wherein there was no air conditioning and there was no heater. So just as a tip, as a prospective Airbnb guest, while air conditioning would be the norm in condominium units here in the Philippines, when you go around to different countries, air conditioning would actually be a perk. So if you're traveling to colder countries in the summer, sometimes it might be a little too hot because that Airbnb doesn't have an air conditioning. And I've actually stayed in an Airbnb in Australia during winter, but my Airbnb didn't have any heater. So these are just a few tips. Make sure that you really read the details and the amenities Moving on to our third essential, your condo must have the trusty electric kettle. Now, I didn't realize how important an electric kettle was until being an Airbnb host. People want to make their instant coffee, they want to make some cup noodles or ramen, so an electric kettle is definitely a must-have. So talking about food and drink, this brings us to number four, and this is sort of a little discussion actually. Should you have to set up a kitchen? Well, in my early years in Airbnb hosting, I actually had a few units that didn't have any cooking facilities or a kitchen 
because basically you can set up your home just like any hotel room that doesn't have a kitchen. But this expectation, this standard has sort of changed throughout the years. Guests are really keen on having a kitchen even though it's not included in the amenities list. But to save you with that trouble, to be arguing with a guest back and forth, just put in some basic cooking facilities. If you're really trying to save some money, just make sure that your condo has some appliances that allow reheating. You can put in a microwave or at least an oven toaster just to be able to provide guests some options on how they can eat inside your unit. But actually, you might run into trouble if you put in a kitchen in your amenities list but don't actually put in a stove. So as much as possible, just put in a stovetop cooker there just to avoid that argument with the guest about what comprises as a kitchen. And yes, your unit should have a refrigerator, even just a very small one, at a few thousand pesos. And number five, of course, most importantly, your unit should have some internet connection. Now, ideally, you're working with a postpaid plan, but if you're new to Airbnb and just wanted to try it out, you could actually work with pocket Wi-Fis or prepaid devices just make sure that you're able to get good coverage, whether it's via Smart or Globe or any of the new players out there. So it's actually interesting. A few years ago, I would put a TV on this list, but now with people more adept to just watching on their phones, I don't think a TV is an essential anymore. It's a nice to have, but if you have internet and you don't have a TV, guests typically won't complain anymore. All right, so those are your top five must have amenities of running an Airbnb condo here in the Philippines. What do you think guys? Do you agree with me? If you have Airbnb hosting experience, please share your comments down below. If you want to convert your condominium unit as an Airbnb, but you don't have the time, let me know. Maybe we can partner up. I can manage your unit for you. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching guys and happy Airbnb -ing.